How you doing folks? Ryan Cullen here, director at Louisiana Academy of Performing Arts. And it's great to see you once again for our faculty profile series here. And joining me in the studio today is the legendary, the infamous, Mr. Ben Hurst, <laughs> instructor of guitar, piano, and uh, percussion. Yes. And sometimes singing, even. Banjo. Banjo. Ukulele, all Mandolin. kinds of stuff. Mandolin, yeah. Yes, <laughs> all right. Well, Ben, you've been here a number of years. Um, wh when did you start? I believe it was in 2007. Fantastic. So, so it has been a while. Many years. <laughs> and you, so you've seen a lot of changes around here. You've taught hundreds of students. At um, least, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to get to all that, but let's start from the beginning. You know, how right. did you get started in your music training? All right. Well, I started playing guitar when uh, I was around 11 years old um, in the sixth grade. But I really started um, with choir at church. Started singing, believe it or not. When I was 11, I took guitar lessons for about three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably would have been longer. Except when I walked into the music store one day where I took lessons, they went out of business. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's terrible. So so, you said uh, music runs in your family too, right? Yes, yeah. uh, my mom is a very good classical pianist. So uh -huh. we've always had music in the house growing up. And uh, right. she, you know, she taught me a little bit, but I think she wanted to push me off to somebody else to, to learn whatever I wanted. And, she said, you can take piano lessons or guitar lessons. So I, I chose guitar lessons mainly because <laughs> of the movie Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. Michael J. Fox. That was big back then, yeah. The opening sure. scene. Oh, he yeah. turns right. everything up to 10. That's right. 10. <laughs> when it blows him back. <laughs> I wanted that so bad when I was a kid. Yeah. So. Now, was your first guitar an acoustic or an electric? It was an acoustic. It was actually a classical guitar. Okay. Um, it, uh, just, just by chance, really. We, we mm. bought it at a pawn shop. It was like the cheapest thing there, but sure. it turned out to be a really good guitar. I held on to it for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, nice. But eventually, I got into electric guitar and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so after I took lessons for those three years, I uh, studied on my own. Um, I had a really good teacher those three years. I mean, he really did teach me a whole lot, and I learned really, really fast. Um, but it wasn't until later in my high school career that I started taking classical guitar lessons from a guy in town who was this crazy talented guy. He was like a grandmaster in chess. He could play classical guitar. Oh, wow. He was a <laughs> tennis pro, like a pool shark. It was uh -huh. a master uh, of a lot of stuff so right it was kind of cool to take from somebody like that that was so talented and so was that something you were specifically seeking out classical uh, guitar yeah uh, mm -hmm. that and learning how to really read music on the guitar interesting okay um, it was a way to actually learn how to finger pick and learn how to read music on the guitar simultaneously mm -hmm. so that's something that really interests me. And I, I just really like the sound of the classical guitar, just the, the Spanish-y kind of sound to it. Yeah, because um, classical is kind of an all-encompassing term sometimes. There's many different styles of um, True. classical guitar with finger picking, it, like yeah, you're saying. You could label it as finger style guitar. Finger style, yeah. That way you could encompass classical or flamenco or, mm -hmm. you know. A variety of other things but um it's one of my favorite styles to play yeah, yeah. nice okay yeah. well talk a little bit so you mentioned learning how to read music on guitar so that's mm -hmm. kind of a touchy subject <laughs> i'd say with guitarists right so in your experience what what are you doing for your students how do you approach that in the classroom well i try to hold back just a little bit mm -hmm. when they first start. I kind of want to just have fun sure. at first. Give them something. I like to, like their very first lesson, I like to give them a song that they can actually play. Yeah. Something with maybe two chords or learn how to read a very simple tab or something mm -hmm. like Smoke on the Water or something like sure. that. I just 
I want to make it fun for them so then I can sneak in the reading music part. Because mm -hmm. if they want to, right? If they want to, right. So not everybody does, but right. I think, you know, keeping the option open for kids is kind of what we do. Right. You know, yeah. What the goal is. And like with adults, you know, it's kind of up to them if they really want to venture down that path. Right. But with kids, I, I mean, I eventually try to kind of sneak it in a little bit and then make it a bigger part of the lesson yeah. if I can, if sure. they're open to that. Um, some kids, you know, go right into it. They, they mm -hmm. prefer that. It's yeah. more of a structure. Yes. It just depends on the personality. Right. They like that security of having <laughs> the notes there. They right. know what to do. Gotcha. Okay. So um, we kind of veered off track a little bit, <laughs> but tell us about college. So you, you went okay. to um, college and got your degree. And I did. I went yeah. to Louisiana Tech University in, <laughs> in Ruston, Louisiana. Nice. And uh, believe it or not, I actually started in accounting. Really? I did. I did not know that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Accounting. That's pretty interesting. I was okay. really good. I took a class my senior year in high school. I was really good at it. Uh -huh. So I thought, hey, why not? I'll go. Right. Even though I was really into music, I was like, well, I better do something that's safer. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But. And they say math and music go. True. Together. So true. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. But it turns out I hated it. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. So I went from crunching numbers to crunching chords, that's what I always say. <laughs> Power chords, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. So what were some highlights of your, your college? You know, what, were there favorite performances or favorite subjects or favorite classes? I would have to say as my guitar professor mm -hmm. um, was really good. He was really hard on me, mm -hmm. which I didn't like at the time, mm -hmm. but... It made me a better guitar player, for sure. Nice. Um, my junior year, so you're supposed to have like a res big recital your junior year and your right. senior year. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I didn't really, I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know I had to learn a, all new songs <laughs> for my <laughs> senior year. So, And it, he just made it harder. True. Sure. But mm -hmm. that pressure really made me a better guitar player, yeah. I would say. Nice. Well, good. So now, these days, do you still do a lot of classical playing or, um, you know, are you playing all kind of different things? And what are your students doing? You know? Well, you know, I play a lot of what my students are interested in, sure. obviously. Um, a lot of rock, a lot of pop, mm -hmm. country, yeah. which I like a lot of that, mm -hmm. but I do on my own time prefer uh, a fingerstyle guitar kind of mm -hmm. thing or a fingerstyle jazz classical yeah that kind of thing or you know I'll, I'm a multi-instrumentalist so mm -hmm. I like to you know make up songs on the piano or on the banjo or whatnot it just kind of depends what yeah. I'm feeling you know nice. but oh. the farm does take up a lot of time these days yeah well let's talk <laughs> about the farm so a little bit about the farm because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. um <laughs> quite a combination too. You know? <laughs> the yeah. farming Counting, musician, yeah. musician, farmer. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of dabbled in uh, gardening, and uh, it just snowballed into the farm that I have now, mm -hmm. which I sell organic produce basically to restaurants, mm -hmm. is, and to family and friends and stuff like that too, and to some teachers and. Yeah. stuff here at work so right. it's just something I fell in love with and mm -hmm. just like music yeah. it's almost a therapeutic thing just like music can be sure so um, it's a lot of hard work I can tell you that yeah. farming is not easy in Louisiana too and it's hot it is extremely difficult yeah. so but one day at a time I just uh, <laughs> yeah keep going keep learning Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just an, ev an evolving thing that's in my life. and uh, Nice. I and what's in it. season right now? In season? Where well, are you growing there? It's spring, so yeah. I'm doing the tomatoes and the cucumbers and nice. lettuce. And um, for restaurants, I sell a lot of fancy stuff. Mm. Edible yeah. flowers, 
Oh. Herbs, microgreens. That's what the chefs like really want. That's like the cream of the crop kind of stuff. Hmm. So I've been, been doing a lot of that. Very cool. <laughs> nice. Um, well, maybe um, tell us a favorite teaching moment that you've had recently. Well, like you said, I've been here for a while. Yeah. So I really like to see the arc of the students' progress over the years, mm -hmm. especially if I can have them at an early age yep. till they graduate high school yep. or beyond. Right. And um, I really like to see that journey, mm -hmm. especially like, like Miguel. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great student. Yeah. It's like Jimi Hendrix reincarnated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, anytime I can make a student laugh, yes. That's really important to me, actually. Yeah. Making them laugh, making them have fun. Yes. Wanting to come back every week. Yep. It's a, I think it's extremely important. Definitely, yeah. Okay, great. Maybe talk to us about what a lesson with you is like, you know, for 30 minutes. If I'm a guitar player, what are some of the things we do? What's the overall structure of the lesson? It's a lot of song-based. Mm -hmm stuff in the lesson so if they've been taken for a little while maybe we'll go over a lot of the songs they've been working on mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> i'll try to give them something new mm -hmm. most weeks maybe every other week sometimes <clears throat> giving them something new to work on even if it's not a complete song yeah just something that's you know just new that's fun a nugget Mm -hmm. Right, that they can right. really just go home and kind of work on and say, oh, you got that, let's go to the next part of the song. Yeah. Or they got the whole song, let's do another song, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of asking them what they like, right. but I consistently always ask them what they want to play. Um, it just makes it more fun if they can play something that they enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. But then I'm like, no, you have to play this song. You have to play this song. <laughs> it's part of your musical journey. You know, you right. need to, as a guitar player, you should know how to play, you know, A, B, C, whatever song it is. Right, and some of those help them to play the songs they want to, to play, right? Because, you know, True. it's like a rite of passage to right. develop the technique you need exactly. to do these other ones. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's leave everyone with a favorite quote or a tip or a trick that you've come across over the years here? Consistency is key. Okay. If yeah. you're consistent about your practicing, mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to be every day, mm -hmm. you know. It could be every other day, 10, yeah. 15 minutes. For the little ones, five minutes, you know. Yeah. But being consistent about it is the key to success. Yeah, okay. And that's with anything, even with farming. <laughs> there <laughs> Gotta you be go. consistent. <laughs> right, powerful words. <laughs> all right, well thanks so much for sharing that, Ben. Thanks for being with us, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Bye.